Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is Tuesday, January the 2nd, 2018. I'm your host, Josh Reeves. Uh, we are in, uh, we're now in red alert territory here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we uh, have extended our fundraiser until tomorrow. That's the longest we have. We don't have any more time past that. Uh, we've got to have $800 in here in the next 24 hours. Uh, we need that by 5 p.m. Central Standard Time on Wednesday. Uh, everybody that donates 100 bucks will get, uh, well, there's all kinds. I'm not going to go through it. Go, uh, you can find the campaign page link on the fundraiser there, and there's all kinds of really good perk packages in there for us uh, since that's our final fundraiser of 2017 now that we're in 2018 there's all kinds of great perk packages in there stuff we haven't offered before um you know if you go up the ladder into the higher ones you get stuff like unlimited downloads from the download shop and special video message from me stuff like that so uh just go through there and look at the different perks so we've got a few of the vault flash drives i talked about in a couple of shows back so uh, if you want one of those, contact me with an email, globalrealityshowgmail.com, and uh, I could give you the instructions on that. It's 100 bucks for the United States, 125 or 120 for outside the United States, shipping, customs, all that. And uh, we have just a, a few of those left. But regardless of all of that, folks, um, you know, I'm still battling back from this Bell's palsy. I'm not completely out of the woods yet. I, you know, I guess I started feeling better. I was looking at myself in the mirror today. I'm like, whoa, wait a second. I'm doing better, but I'm still not out of the woods on this stuff yet. I guess I, I you know, when you start feeling better and stuff, it tends to make you think sometimes you're better than you are. But I, regardless of all that, I battled back from all this hell stuff. I got so much work left to do, and yet right here, at the end of the year, in the beginning of the year, you guys are just not going to support us and you're just going to let it crumble. I just don't, I don't see that happening. So I think maybe it's the holidays and some of you out there just uh, haven't seen that I posted, I've posted recent shows or hadn't even known that I've done some recent shows and, and go listen to these other shows I've done. They, they're short ones, they're only 20 minutes, but uh, they're all not just fundraising shows. I mean, obviously we're in red alert territory now but um the previous ones there is some still some good info in there so especially yesterday's show i don't think yesterday's show on the first got enough plays and listens yet there's uh, you know some good info uh peppered in there if you just take a listen to it so definitely going to check i just i i just think that uh you know it's the holidays people haven't got caught back up they know i've been ill you know i think that's probably what it is they probably don't even know that i'm even, you know, doing some of these shows. So I want to give everybody the benefit of the doubt and get everybody time here. Uh, you know, but we're just out of time. So that's why I'm asking everybody now to please chip in what you can. I mean, we usually, you know, the day of or whatever, we get people chipping in small amounts. So this, this time we've just gotten, I mean, we heard hardly anything. Um, We've only moved the needle by about $200 since yesterday's show. And folks, that's not, we're, we're going to be done and over with here. You know, no films, no, no future shows, none of that stuff. It's going to be game over for a measly $800. Now I know we've got plenty of people out there, eight people out of all the thousands of listeners that we have that are this is now in our 11th year of broadcasting here. I know that somebody out there can, eight people can donate $100. I know that one person out there could donate $800. I know that one person out there could donate $400 and come in and get the prize pack. Go check out the prize pack I talked about yesterday. Got an actual piece of the rock wall, and the first person donates uh, $400 will be declared the, the winner. Now, if somebody comes in after you and donates $600, you know, you're going to be out of luck. But still, first person that comes in with $400 is going to be the winner for that prize pack. So, um. Like I said, I don't, it, you know, oftentimes around the holidays and stuff like that, especially on Christmas and New Year's and, you know, the weeks overlapping and people get into their uh, routines of listening and sometimes people are 
listening to the show and, and other shows like it and stuff while they're at work or in the car or whatever it may be. So, uh, I think the only reason we haven't reached our goal yet is just strictly because it's, you know, there's still people are getting back from the holidays. I mean, people aren't really checking out the shows yet. Again, they think I'm still off, but I'm, I'm doing better and I'm working to be back here very soon. If we reach 100% of our goal, I'll be back to doing some regular shows, hopefully in the next week or so. Um, if nothing else, uh, happens with my health and I'm, I'm really am feeling better every day. Not looking much better. The smile's still not coming back. My speech is still a little bit slurred and stuff, but it's it's easier to mask it a little bit sometimes here when uh, when you're on the microphone. You just kind of have to move your head around a lot, like you're fucking Michael J. Fox with fucking Parkinson's. <laughs> so don't expect any fucking. Don't expect to see my mug on uh, on video anytime soon, if ever again, if it doesn't improve. In fact, I'll probably just replace all images of me online on social media and, uh, you know, videos and stuff. I'll just, I'll get somebody to do like a fucking, you know, like a 1980s fucking <laughs> composite criminal sketch or something like fucking Jeff Rince uses. Fucking poodle head fucking drawing from 1989. That <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'll do. I'll have somebody like, you know, draw me with a fucking bouffant or something, you know. I'll just replace that. It'll be like fucking. I'll just say Reeves, and it'll have me with like a you know, fucking George Washington p- Ponce wig on or some shit. I would never go that far. Um, weird thing is, I, I I think I might have mentioned this before. Uh, over the holidays when I saw the 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 new uh, the new Star Wars film, which by the way I actually liked. I hated that fucking last one. Force Awakens, the Jar Jar Abrams. I can't stand that fucking guy. But I actually like this new one. And then I also heard people who liked the last one, unlike me, didn't like this one. So there you go. But I noticed during the movie that my right ear was doing this weird thing. And I've noticed since I put the headphones on. I haven't noticed any other time. Only when I wear the headphones, it show that like there's something different about my right ear. Like the sound sounds muffled. So I know it's definitely got something to do with the Bell's palsy because my hearing was affected a little bit. And I noticed my balance was affected a little bit. From the, this is some, I tell you what, this uh, Bell's palsy stuff, and there's been discussion um, from some of the other listeners and whatnot. I mean, I started getting, when I was working on Spellcasters Volume 1 in 2015 and then released it in 2016, all through that time I was getting psychic attacks um you know electronic it's just stuff where you know sound frequencies they use sound frequency cannons and stuff to affect uh people's mental stability and interesting enough right around that time i found out that the department of defense has an office for exactly This type of, I mean, this is literally the office that specializes, ladies and gentlemen, in this type of technology. They have offices right here in Dallas, in Irving, actually, which is a suburb of Dallas, right next to it. And in the area known as Las Colinas, which is, uh, translates to the hills, because this whole fucking area is built on mounts. I kid you not. I got a friend whose dad uh, lives over there, and and the golf course is like behind his house, and the whole golf course, as many golf courses are, built into ancient mounds and stuff. Anyway, this Department of Defense office that specializes in this type of um, harassment, electronic harassment, this type of uh, technology, has offices in Las Colinas in Irving that literally touch and literally are right next to, ladies and gentlemen, the Scientology headquarters uh, there, uh, or the, the this, of this area or whatever, right there in Irving and Las Colinas. Kid you not. And yeah, I went through a lot of shit during that time. And uh, with the stuff I found out now, and with the death toll that's 
been behind some of the people who have, uh, you know, tried to get this truth out. It's, I mean, it's nuts. The stuff I've uncovered with all of this, the fall stuff and all the rest of it, everything that's going to be in Spellcasters too, is uh, stuff no, what, just nobody's figured out yet. Just, just point blank. It's not on the internet. You won't find it out there. It's, there is stuff literally in this that I have that's going to be in this film that's never been discovered before. And every time you hear about it on the internet or anything after this movie, it will be because of my work and this film. And we, that's, we, just, we, we can't let what I have in the bag, ladies and gentlemen, you know, ha- let $800 keep that from happening. My God. Because I promise you, once you understand and know this information and this knowledge, and you will this year, if we meet this goal, you will then understand, once you know what I know now, that this information is not only priceless and invaluable, but is really going to be instrumental in bringing people that extra step. There are a lot of people out there that are willing to go so far in this stuff. Uh, you know, I don't think there's been enough because there's so much COINTEL and so much, so many shills and so much disinformation. Nobody out there anymore because everybody's been bought, paid off, given TV shows, paid off that way, you know, sponsors and sponsorships and all this stuff. Listen, nobody out there is progressing the real truth anymore. Everybody's just regurgitating the same old watered down shit. And that's not what I do here and what I've ever done with my work and my films. My stuff is always new research, new information, and stuff that's coming out. I mean, yes, you have to use stuff that's already out there in some cases to, to coincide with the new stuff you found and to make the case so people understand and have a reference, reference point for what you're talking about. But... I mean, believe me, folks. I mean, I there used to be... I, there's not anybody anymore that I listen to or watch shows over anything as far as information is concerned that I'm a fan of anymore. No one. Not one single person. Now, that's not to say I don't think there are some people out there that are doing good shows and stuff that I, you know, I think are okay and I'll go on their shows and do interviews. So I'm not talking about those people. But I just mean like, you know, writers and other documentary makers and stuff within the sort of the same genre that I do here. No, man, there's nobody anymore because everybody's been bought out, compromised, or is shilling disinformation or, you know, on the wrong team. I hate to fucking say it. Many people have said it before me, and I didn't believe them. I believe them now. It's the goddamn truth. I'm the last man standing here, folks. I'm the last of the motherfucking Mohicans. I'm the last of the real, honest-to-God researchers. Who are willing to go there? Oh, I got some new information on Rockwall stuff, too. Jesus. Oh, we're going to uncover that motherfucker yet, too. Don't you worry. It's going to happen. I think I've been frustrated because I wanted this thing to happen a lot sooner than it has. And that's one thing that this, this research and this work has taught me. And this show and doing all this stuff has taught me is just patience, which I never had before. you got to be patient. Eventually, the tide will turn. I mean, it was like that when I did the Secret Rights stuff, man. When I first heard talking about the Council for National Policy, 2007, 2008, 2009, when the film came out, nobody wanted to talk about it. Now it's a part of the language. Um, so that was not there until I got people bringing up the question and questioning Alex Jones and all the rest of these connections to this stuff. So the tide will turn. And... uh yeah, somebody contacted me. I can't really give out the. They wouldn't want me to like give any information out. Really, I, you know, I'm not going to give out their name or anything. But uh, yeah, it's crazy. Apparently, uh, one of our listeners wrote me and said they know somebody that's a caretaker of like a thousand acres and has rock wall on it and caves that your electronics batteries and flashlights and everything go dead when you go in it i mean you know uh, 
caves with depictions of giant heads and stuff in it. I mean, you know, every time they try to suppress my work, every time they try to keep my stuff from coming out, and they have, and they try to counteract it every time. They deal with the CMP stuff. They deal with the law secret stuff. History Channel tried to run their fucking op, and it failed miserably. And they then they've tried to counteract with Leah Ramini and all this other stuff and making all trying to make the conversation of people exposing Scientology being about Oh, they split up my family and the tear jerky stuff. Never any of the real information, not any of the stuff you see in the spellcasters, none of the connection to MK Ultra, none of this stuff. Okay. And it's funny. I don't know if you guys have noticed this. I haven't really talked about it. Have you guys noticed, like, earlier, kind of, I guess, the middle of last year, right around the time, when I was kind of talking, somebody sent me a message. It was right around the time the the uh, the Tupac biopic came out in the theaters, and somebody, or movie, DVD, or something, somebody sent a message asking if I'd seen it. And I, I brought up the Tupac stuff, and I've talked about that, you know, quite a bit. Because, like I said, it's not a topic I'd ever talked about before, but it is one I've known a lot about and stuff and research. But it's funny, since just since that time period, ladies and gentlemen, until just a few weeks ago, there have been at least two or three so-called, you know, uh, who killed Tupac conspiracy things being uh, trotted out on mainstream TV now, A&E and all this other shit. Have you guys seen this? I'm telling you, it's like every time I get to talking about a topic, they send out the fucking disinfo codes. They did this back in 2010. I can remember, well, I can tell you right now, folks, I was on A&M, AM, FM stations. I was on micro FMs back from like 2008 to the end of 2009. And I was, I've told the story about being on the big 50,000 watt station down there in central Texas that they took Alex Jones off and put me on. And I was talking about Anunnaki stuff and all that, you know, stuff back then and talking about it in the middle of the daytime on fucking AM and FM stations. And, you know, at that time there weren't, Ancient Aliens wasn't on yet. There weren't TV shows on TV. I know it's easy to forget this now because stuff just goes down the memory hole and people don't remember. You know, there, the talk I can remember getting laughed off shows talking about the Anunnaki stuff back then. And I, I mean, I remember when Ancient Aliens first came on, it was like all the stuff that I'd gotten laughed at talking about that just a couple of years ago was considered taboo in any realm of paranormal, occult, or, you know, truth, or whatever, whatever realm you want to discuss. And all of a sudden, here they go, they're, they're trying to... Eat, to legitimize and delegitimize this stuff at the same time and take it out of the realm of people who are trying to find legitimate research on it it, and then present people with the old belief, you know, the adage that many people believe, well, it's on TV, it must be true. So then it doesn't matter what an independent researcher like Josh Reeves or anybody else has done. It only matters the opinion of what's being presented on the History Channel because if your research was correct, it'd be on the History Channel, not theirs, right? See, that's, again, that's all part of this. It literally, folks, all of my work, they have they spent millions of dollars counteracting. I mean, when I was on Channel 5, UK TV, for that conspiracy documentary, uh, the Hollywood Files, still on, still on fucking on, uh, Netflix. Those motherfuckers didn't pay me a dime for that shit. They hack-jobbed my interview. He interviewed, he interviewed me for like an hour and put me in there for two minutes. Come on. Oh, we'll put your website on the screen. I'm like, motherfucker, you can't even buy me lunch and give me five bucks for gas to come the fuck down here to meet you. Yet you can fly a film crew all the way from England to Dallas. And these guys are talking about, oh, how they can't wait for the interview to be done so they can go fuck around in Fort Worth. It's like, yeah, come on. So.
again, folks, <laughs> these motherfuckers at every turn have tried to combat my information and my effect and downplay me while at the same time messing with my views on YouTube. No, not stuff that I cry and whine about like fucking Alex Jones, but folks, there has been a systematic campaign and it continues to be stepped up against me. And I've been fighting this shit at this point pretty much longer than anybody. And I have a wealth of information. But we have to meet our monthly goals every month to keep this thing floating. That's the minimum we need to keep this thing floating. All my fucking medical bills and stuff that's piled up this month, multiple doctor visits, I don't have anything left here. We've got 800 bucks to raise. I don't know what else to say. The ball's in your court, folks. I got to stop before I get my blood pressure. I can feel my blood pressure gotten up, and that's one thing that's bad for this. Bell's palsy. It's almost like I can feel it fucking tightening up while I'm talking to you. Whew. Okay. But God damn it, when I'm passionate about something, I can't hold back. You know? I can't fake it. I can't fucking... I, my, it, if it gets my blood up, it gets my blood up. It's just fucking... I can't fake this stuff because it's, it's my fucking life, man. I put everything in. This is not shits and kicks and fucking giggles to me. I didn't get in this shit to fuck around. I'm a fucking soldier for the truth. And I know we got some of those out there with you. I know you stand with me. I just need everybody to show it to me right now. All right, we'll talk soon. I'm out.